Hi subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Webs from Slidenerd here. Today, I'm going to talk about interfaces in Java. Surely you have seen the syntax of interfaces on some video or some blog post or the other. First, let me show you why we need interfaces with the help of a simple example. In this example, we are going to try to make a blog reader app that reads from Mashable, TechCrunch and make use of. Now first we are going to do this without using interfaces. Let's see what kind of problems we have. Now I have three people who are ready for the job. There is Alex, there is Mark and there is Shiva. All these three people are going to work with one of these websites to get data from it for my app. So these are the following steps that I'll be following to make my app. First step is to read data from the internet. Second is to convert that data to a string and then third is to extract meaningful information from that string which can be in HTML or XML format or JSON. Now let's not bother about the details. Let's talk about what these three people are gonna do individually. So Alex is gonna work on Mashable Reader, Mark is gonna work on TechCrunch Reader and Shiva is gonna work on the make use of Reader at this point. So Alex writes method like this, read stream, get string and extract data for these three stages that we have. Mark writes the methods a bit differently and Shiva writes the methods even more differently. Now remember, each of these methods do the same thing. For example, read stream, connect and get stream are all doing the same thing. Read data from the internet. The only difference is that they are working with different websites. Same goes with get string, to string, convert to string. And the third step, which is extract data, extract or get log data. The problem with this kind of approach is we don't have a contract where people have to agree to keep certain method names or do certain things the way you want. So in other words, when Alex, Mark and Shiva are going to give me the final code or the three classes, I'm going to be confused because there are nine method names which I need to remember and figure out what exactly each method does. Now this was without using interfaces. Now let me show you how things work when we are using interfaces in Java. So this time we have the same thing, the same app, same three people. This time what I do is before asking them to begin working, I make an interface called blog reader. Now this interface has three methods, connect to stream, get string, extract data. However, none of these methods have a body. In other words, it is like a contract I'm going to give to these three people and they are going to fill the contract on their own. So in other words, the Mashable reader, the TechCrunch reader and make use of reader is going to use these methods from this interface called blog reader. Now when they write code, this is what happens. All of them have to keep the same method names and all of them have to follow the contract specified by the interface. In our case, is to have these method names defined inside their classes. Only difference between these methods now is that they work with different websites. For the connect to string stream method of Mashable Reader, it will work with Mashable.com. But connect to stream or TechCrunch Reader will work with TechCrunch.com. So this way, interfaces can really use be used to make things standard when you're working with several people who and you want to control how the source code is made by people so that they agree to a specific contract. Now this is just one scenario where interfaces can be used. Now interfaces also have other things like polymorphism and stuff which we'll be talking about in the upcoming videos. But for now, let's discuss how interfaces are made in Java and exactly what kind of restrictions are they having because right now if you're looking at this, you're probably having the question, why cannot I use a super class and subclass for doing the same thing? Or why do I need something called an interface? What is an interface and why is it so different than a class? So let me answer you all these questions right now. So now let's begin answering your questions about interfaces. First of all, interfaces define and standardize the ways in which things such as people or systems can interact with one another. For example, the controls on your car like your steering wheel, your gearbox, your ignition keys and whatever other stuff you have, they act as an interface between the driver that is you and the people or the parts inside the car over there. 
they allow you to perform only a limited set of operations for example you use the steering wheel to turn your car you use the accelerator brake or clutch to change gears and you use the keys to start ignition and stuff like that but other than the controls that your car provides there is no way that you can control how much petrol is getting burnt inside your engine now can you so this is how interfaces restrict or you can say provide as common interface like where you can work with things over there now different cars may have different internal parts but remember externally they all have the similar steering wheel and controls and clutch and gear and stuff like that so this is how interfaces unify things together now the interface specifies what operations a car must permit users to perform but does not specify how the operations are performed and of course it is always the case the actual work of driving your car or turning your wheel or accelerating your car is actually done by the parts inside it is not just the switch or the steering wheel which is going to do all that work right it's merely an interface this is the way you have to think when you are trying to work with interfaces in java or c sharp or any other language that supports interfaces so now let's talk about the rules and restrictions that apply to interfaces first of all interfaces can be considered as something equivalent to multiple inheritance because in java you can extend only one class but you can implement many interfaces they contain methods with no bodies remember that you cannot have method definitions inside interfaces you cannot create objects of an interface but you can declare variables of interface type now if you ask about why we need to make variables we will take a look at that when we talk about polymorphism in interfaces now subclasses must provide an implementation of the methods of the interface or themselves be declared abstract now this is a contract which your interface forces people to do in our case if you remember alex mark and the other guy shiva they had to make the methods exactly the way the interface specified that is why they were following the contract if they had said that they didn't want to follow the contract they will have to make the classes abstract which they didn't do right use only constant variables inside an interface there cannot be any instance variables because an interface may look like a class but it is not a class now when you have both an extends and an implement in other words if your class is trying to extend from something and at the same time if you want to implement some interface the extends must come before the implements so that you can have multiple interfaces implemented in your class now implementing an interface like i said is like signing a contract with the compiler that says i will declare and write the code for all the methods that is defined by the interface otherwise i will make my class abstract consider that a legal agreement you have with the compiler when you're using interfaces a public interface must be defined inside the file with the same name as the interface and the dot java file name extension just like what you have with public classes in java the same rules and restrictions apply for public interfaces in java where the file name matches with the interface name if the interface is public so java does not allow subclasses to inherit from more than one superclass like i previously said you can have as many interfaces implemented as you want just use a comma between the list different interface names again if you're not sure how to do this in the next video we are going to take a look at an example of interfaces so don't worry about it you can come back to this video once you have seen the example and again get things better for yourself and of course all the methods in an interface are public by default you don't have to write public void blah 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 it's already public in the same way all the variables in an interface are automatically public static final now the word static comes into the picture automatically because like i said they don't have instance variables which means everything is static inside them and they are final because they only define constants so it is natural that the variables inside an interface are public static final interface does not have constructors or it does not declare constructors for itself or any other classes over here and most of all if you make an interface be sure to include the comments that tell the other person how to implement the interface for example in my case when i was going to give alex mark and shiva the interface for making techcrunch reader mashable reader and the other reader out there i have to make the comments properly 
so that they will understand exactly what each method is supposed to do. In other words, I'll tell them extract data is supposed to go to the internet, load the HTML file or XML file, process it, and it's, it should get returned back the raw data from that site. And they will decide how to actually make it for the different websites that is TechCrunch, Mashable, and stuff like that. So this completes our basic discussion about interfaces. I have not shown you an example because this video has got very big right now. So in the next video, I'm going to show you an example of how interfaces actually work and how they look and stuff like that. And in the meantime, if you do like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching and as always, have a nice day.